Does Kentucky have a twin flip in the works? Let's bring on Nick Roush of KSR to the On3 Roundtable to discuss. Now, Mr. Roush, you have set the internet ablaze with your double flip pick of Jared and Jacob Smith on the recruiting prediction machine. Now, the Smith brothers are from Kentucky, but they committed to Michigan in April. So what's the intel behind your flip pick? Well, it all started when... uh, They got a little homesick, I think. They were attending a prep school in Cheshire, Connecticut. uh, Decided to move back home this summer, and they're currently enrolled at at Corbin High School, which is only about an hour and a half away from the University of Kentucky. And as soon as I learned that (laughs) they were going to move to their old Kentucky home, I knew that Vince Mara was going to be on the prowl. It's been pretty personal with Kentucky's big dog, the associate head coach. He used to work with Steve Klingscale, who's now at Michigan. They went head-to-head on a lot of recruiting battles last year, and Klink got the best of them and a lot of them. Well, uh, the empire is striking back. Uh, Vince already picked up a commitment from Torian Nichols, and now he had the chance to lock the Smith twins up. It's far from – it hasn't happened yet. There's still teased to die. Uh, and right. eyes to cross as well. Uh, but ever since they moved back within the first week during that final uh, week of July, they were on campus twice. Uh, and Kentucky's done a great job of locking up the state so far with Cutter Bowley so far in this class. And these mm-hmm. guys could be the next to join the fold to help Kentucky get a top 25 class in 2024. All right, so you've called your shot, but what's the timetable on this? When can Kentucky fans – you know, legitimately expect some action here. You know, I I initially thought that this might be more of a drawn-out process, but uh, we've already seen one of the Smith brothers rocking Kentucky gear, and a lot of it's ultimately going to come down to something that's out of their hands, and that's the Kentucky High School Athletic Association graining them a waiver to play. They've got to get eligible. So as soon as they get eligible, Kentucky High School football season starts uh, Friday, August 18th, Um, If they aren't eligible for that first game, uh, there's a lot of power brokers that are putting pressure on the high school commissioner to make sure they receive their eligibility. I I would expect some movement within a couple of days once they get the green light to play football in the state of Kentucky this fall. All right. Very interesting. And how important do you think these two defensive linemen are to Kentucky's 24 class? I already alluded to the the way that Kentucky's had success so far within the state. But uh, defensive linemen, you don't get good ones. They aren't a dime a dozen, right? And and especially the fact that you can have an edge rusher, too, with Jacob. Yeah. Having a nice one-two punch in a 3-4 uh, defense that Brad White implements, uh, there's a lot of versatility there uh, where you can have an edge player uh, that can play the jack position that J.J. Weaver is currently trying to uh, run an all-SEC campaign from. And, and then you can also have a versatile defensive lineman. Deion Walker, he's playing all three positions. Now, I don't think you're going to see the same thing uh, here with one of the Smith brothers, which I mistakenly – I get Jacob and Jared confused. We're still trying to identify him here. <laughs> um, but if you got a guy in a 3-4 that can play multiple positions – Brad White loves the multiple looks where you can confuse fronts. And it's not just because they look alike. It's because they can play both spots. So being able to rack up four-star talents in the trenches, that's not something that happens very often in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And when they are here, Kentucky has to make it work. Uh, And so to be able to get some big-time players from the Commonwealth, it can pay dividends down the road for the Wildcats. All right, well, we'll see how that plays out. But, Nick, what do you think is Kentucky's biggest remaining need in 2024? Uh, I think some of it's going to happen. um, You're you're hoping for some of it to happen relatively soon. Hardly Gilmore is a four-star wide receiver from Florida that's committing uh, in the next couple weeks before the college football season starts. Getting a big-time receiver on board, I think, will be significant. And then off-ball linebacker uh, Mm. because – they're in the mix with two or three guys, but that that off-ball linebacker position can be very important, and there's not a ton of prolific big names out there. Devin Smith is one they're currently eyeing, and I know a lot of big names like Georgia and Alabama and LSU are finalists as well. So between Devin Smith, Hardley Gilmore, and then Brian Robinson, just because they've already got one edge committed and could get another um, when the Smith twins joined the fold, Brian Robinson has been another guy that Vince Mar- Merrill has targeted for a long time. They put a lot of investment in, and now it's seemingly Kentucky, Michigan, Ohio State, or Pitt. Uh, 
Uh, that one's drawn out a lot longer. If Kentucky can lock that up, you're looking at a bona fide top 25 class. All right, Nick Roush from KSR on the on three roundtable to explain his twin flip picks. Thank you, Nick. It's always a pleasure being on the on three roundtable. And if you like that video, go check out all the content on KSR.com. And also subscribe to the on three roundtable.